I have been waiting for a whole week out here. Just, just where is he at? This is getting ridiculous. Finally, off of that clip show, and not exactly what we were expecting to happen. Kind of left without a proper payoff to last week. But either way, we have a whole change up when it comes to the visuals of the intro, since we have entered the DGP versus the JGP, with Beroba officially in the intro with her squad of Jamato, and then in the DGP side with each one of our main trio with their supporters. Can we also take a moment to appreciate Kawa's face in this shot? Great. Great. So, what's the deal? After Betoba's Jamato Garden Wipe, Archimedal was able to save... A whole bunch of... Okay, alright. I don't know with what time, but he did it. But a handful of them are fully matured ones that were indeed left over from the previous garden. With the remnants and Ozma sporting some new digs, it's time for the JGP to get underway with the bells on hand. And fever buckles for the Fujimoto riders in the bunch. What's the goal? Fuck shit up. It's really that simple. More points depending on what exactly they destroy, with the final boss being Nerum himself. Ozma doesn't care too much about just killing people and destroying stuff. It's the riders that he's after. So much so that he starts hallucinating that his friend Toru's back. Except, he's not hallucinating, but it's actually a Jamato who's inherited his memories. Daichi even thinks that eventually, that Jamato might be a one-to-one -one representation of Toru. Also, why isn't Daichi in the game? Oh, it's because it's Jamato's only, so he's just chilling with the villains. So what's the arena? A festival with Oni! Catch the Oni's bells and get your wish granted! Kinda on brand for the Jamato to be rocking them as well! showing up early to the events and making it hell for everyone around, including completely relevant kid who will propel the B-plot of this two-episode arc. Now, with the Jamato on the loose, it's time for the DGP to get on the move. What the fuck, Zio? I've been waiting outside of Denny's parking lot for a week. Bro, you know I've got a day job on the weekdays. Plus, Friday and Saturday, I was gassing up Don Bros. So, it's Sunday. So, it's... It's Skeets time. Well, I'm gonna need you to hurry it up so I can introduce you to these hands. Look, look, alright, but do me a solid at least and just go and do the play-by-play -play of this week's episode. Fine, fine. As long as we get to Denny's before it gets dark. Okay, great, great. Uh, that's gonna completely happen now. What the hell happened over here in the week I was gone? JGP TV? Okay. Alright, so, this was not the way that I was going to try and hit y'all with this. Hey, wait a sec, where'd you get that sultry beat? Fuck you, that's who. The Jamato have come to grow all over your lawns, but leading the pack is Buffa out to get him some bonus points. But the Jamato Riders want in on this too giving us some fevers of monster and boost combinations. But Nago's got some fever of her own, bringing out the Zambusi only to get that head game on Star's Premier Access. But with that exclusive on hand, she's got the saws going with the new combo, Revolve and Blow. But that jamato has got that Fox McCloud level of recovery, knocking Nago back. Kawa goes from ninja toes to ninja rolls, trying to give everyone some Kage Bunshin. But Bishop takes care of that. But what's this fake out? A double fake out! And with that, Torumato gets ready for the finisher. But round one is now over. So, Denny's? Not yet, not yet. Uh, there's one more fight, but first, everyone's gotta throw some shade over at Azuma, but it doesn't matter since Jean's gotta drop some more deeds. Loving on some of this drama, he reveals that in his time, everything is predetermined and boring. Human emotion is just nothing 
From birth to even death, everything is already set in its place. Kekera even takes this further, not understanding the concept of a festival since the concept doesn't really exist where he's from. So it's lost knowledge. Similar to how we just don't know too much about the ancient past, but can kind of draw conclusions. But it seems a little contradicting, but I'll touch on that later. Neon gets hit up on the popularity trail only to run into her unknown supporter, Kune. Luckily, as an audience, we already know he's Kune, so the change in character dynamic from their first encounter isn't all that weird. But to Neon, it is, since he knows her wish. Though, knowing is half the battle, and the issue is that 10% of people now know about the Jamados now that the Jammer areas aren't a thing anymore. So that's when... Drops the info that he's responsible for keeping government involvement in the happenings away. And suggests to Niram to just go ahead and redo the world. But Niram isn't about exposing himself. So instead, what he might just do is wipe the slate clean. And this world along with it. No remakes. But Time Daddy ain't about to let his baby girl exist without true love. So, it's here that we find out that he, and not Mitsume, is the one to wish to have a child. Ace meets up with the important kid for this week only to find out about his sick mom. But you know, Ace has infinite money. So he can just go pay for her medical expenses like the kid in episode 2, right? No? Okay. We now join Toru Mato giving us Azuma's backstory that they used to be street hooligans way back in the day. Until getting picked up to do decent grown people work. Getting amped up. From the motivation, Beroba is ready to put him to use and even got some secret mission planned to give him the boost. Here we are, round two, and the drums are beating. Ace is ready to be the two for one Grand Slam, but since the game isn't in their favor anymore, Gene chimes in with the buddy up. Buffa giving Keats the horn job he deserves, he clears the stupidly easy secret mission, landing him that command buckle. But not meshing with the way that the sword works, he proceeds to use his fist instead, and takes one for the team and just slashes himself to get the juice needed. Going jet cannon and making Ace into a ragdoll. Is he gonna finish? Nope, because that's gonna be for next week. So, rating time, and I'll see you outside at Denny's. He won't. So, yeah, this episode of Geats turned the game fully over to represent the Jamato, as they do start getting a bit more personality with their general types. There's a bit more information regarding the future folks that kind of contradicts itself, but seeing the enemies actually put up a proper fight and keep up with that strategy was so enjoyable to say the least. So, because of that, this episode gets the Ace A. So, when it comes to the bit of the contradiction in terms of storytelling, we have Jean and Kakeda iterate that the current now, in terms of timeline, has a lot of oddities that just doesn't exist in their time. So, it sounds foreign to them. The issue I have is that if you have proper time travel within their society, because it seems like it's a normality, then shouldn't the secrets of the past be pretty common knowledge to them? Especially given that they'd gone and seen multiple eras by this time. This kind of further implies that the world as it exists could indeed just be a simulation, and that the developers just filled in the blanks or took some creative liberties where it needed to be. Kind of like Assassin's Creed games. But the lines of Gene in particular about how their society acts gives me not just Matrix vibes, but another show vibe. Gurren Lagann. And I'm reminded of the anti-spirals and how they ended up closing off their entire race and civilization in order to keep the universe at bay. Since we saw previously that Nirum was enjoying the food of the era, while everyone else is just enjoying the mundane nature of the world comparative to their own, it really just cements the notion that this is just a bunch of future folks playing in a game in, you know, VR inside of a tube. 
It's at the point now that I feel that if something happens to one of these supporters, it might not be the same as death per se, but probably just being IP banned from it all. Though, to throw more fuel onto the fire, or the time fire, we see that Neon's father got a wish to have a daughter. It kind of makes more sense now why her mother is as overprotective as well. Because if they were a couple that couldn't conceive a child, if he was a previous DGP contestant, and it's kind of being implied that he was, then that was his ultimate desire, and now just wishes for the best for her. It's honestly a plot point that I thought was going to be going to be ace related, but instead, it was a nugget meant for Neon. So, her character's value is increasing in that stock. Now onto the next topic, with the Jamato taking on personas of previous contestants, it'll be interesting to see what the other Jamatos would start impersonating. I think Shiroi is likely off the table since they've used him quite a bit. But it could also be Old Man Takahiro from Episode 2 to show back up to foil Keiwa, or worse, even if they weren't contestants, but just casualties, could Keiwa's parents also be Jamato impersonators? They could even throw in a previously unknown contestant into the mix as well, similar to how Daichi and Sae were previous contestants before their debut. So we'll have to wait and see in terms of how this prospect will end up getting paid off, if it does. Though the storyline, or rather this game, will likely be solved next week, since it's clear all Ace and the gang have to do is steal their bells. So here's hoping that the deets regarding what Ace really is next week aren't going to be a fake out and are actually satisfying in that regard. So what did you think about this week's Geats? Neon getting more backstory, Azuma's new fit, that new intro, and how long will Galaxy Blade be waiting over outside Denny's? Anyway, that's it for me, waiting on some subs for King Oger. But until next time, bye.